Honors, before I need to take questions and get to you all, I want to congratulate you all for getting through the weekend to the scariest part of Sunday. I'm so proud of all of you. Uh, Nathan's going to introduce our judges. They're all here to support you and help you in your growth. Afterwards, there's sandwiches and boba for everyone. I even got a boba for the dog. Would you like to introduce this to our judges? He's one of our, he's the math of Impactathon. This is not <laughs> very helpful for nerves. And thank you all for hanging in. I'm really proud of all of you. Yes. Um, we'll start. I have a few housekeeping things for our students. So just, yeah, just talk amongst yourself for a moment. Um, teaching the students is very important. So I actually uh, shared a link for you to upload your um, resume. Please do that. It can have all five students with a copy of the code that I described so that we don't spend time switching computers up here. The other thing is, I'm in each team that comes up and is like, the next team beyond that. Your team on that, I don't need my team to up here or can I sit in this and be ready? It's one to be the normal way to find this. So we can do all the order, for the order together. Yeah. 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 Okay, next team, Tali, you guys are ready for this last one, you're up to it. Um, A5. Um, A5. Um, you know, is A5. Julia? Yeah, Spectrum. Um, then we have the Hello, I think you're the best one here, and then the last one. Oh, no. And then health flights here. Um, hers is here. Right future. Yes. So that's a good job. Now I also just everybody have a time for on their team. I don't know. Sometimes I really rely on you and your team to 
your support with the finance. Yeah, I, I will be um, You guys are doing awesome. We really proud of all you to stand up and go in there. Confidence and every bit of fun, right? So, thank you, sir. No. Thank you. Thank you. All right, mystery solved. So thank you. They just moved it behind the the tree. I don't know why. Welcome everyone to Kisan number 20, the final pitches. <laughs> um, we're really excited to have all of you here in the room and a few people that are streaming online. So we have um, a live, live stream going on. Um, so we'll share that link afterwards if you want to share it with your friends and family as well. Um, it has been an incredible day and a half of, uh, of ideation around social entrepreneurship. Our students have heard from speakers that have been talking about um, universal design in clothing, um, um, uh, halal and clean uh, cosmetics, and also um, uh, a startup that pulled carbon out of the air. So they've heard a lot from about financials, about storytelling, and the social entrepreneurship business modeling as well. And now they're ready to pitch their ideas to you. Um, and so before we start, we'd love to introduce the judges. But first, Mary Patrick um, Kavanaugh from Bridges to Business, who's been the host and is uh, will be shepherding and heralding the students after today to continue their work. Um, and so I'll introduce the judges. I'd love for you to say a few words about yourself and also what excites you or what you might be looking for when you hear from founders. So Shaheen, oh, uh, yeah, Shaheen is um, an attorney and also is an investment program and um, loves working with startups and founders. So. That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, I'm Shaheen Faisado, I'm an attorney and I support startups and have been doing so for 15 years. Um, I'm also a fellow with um, a venture fellow with um, Google Venture. Um, and of late, my focus has really been um, on helping women founders get more funding and more women um, angel investors. Last year, 2021, actually a couple years ago, um, we are we deployed $330 billion in capital, venture capital, only 2% of that went to women founders. So I'm here to help change that. Good luck, Dan. Hi, everyone. I'm Mr. Wendrick. I'm very excited to see you all here. I saw the practice presentation happening in the hall. I felt, felt the change being made um, San Diego, California with the urban education around the world. And I'm really excited to see what you are going to do to help change the world too. Thank you all so much for being here. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Havens. Um, I started my company about 20 years ago. And so I was in the same position you guys were about 20 years ago, so trying to uh, get people fired about my business. Uh, and I sold that. And and um, uh, went to Europe for about six weeks for sabbatical, and I'm starting a new company and consulting group that uh, started now. So I'm sort of in the same position you guys are, although I don't have judges. That's because uh, I'm my wife, you know. So it's a kind of different. Um, but I'm really excited to be here. I uh, love the idea of hearing new ideas and helping people along. And I would suggest that you guys are presenting to us. I know we're called judges, and that sort of like puts us undue pressure on you of being judged. But I don't think we're being judged. I think what we're trying to do is be facilitators to help you guys get to where you need to go. So think of us much more as teammates, facilitators. We're all on the same page, kind of on the same shift, or on the right way, as opposed to really being. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Ida Bart. Many of you know me. Um, uh, many of you and. Um, I, uh, so I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, impact entrepreneurs and you know, tech entrepreneurs through UC Irvine and the Small Business Development Center. 
I'm also just got, um, appointed um, in the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center at Cal State Long Beach. That's brand new. Um, and uh, so I love impact entrepreneurship. I love solving for the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through the power of business and thinking in abundance that we can have great companies and great impact at the same time. Um, so, you know, super excited to be here. I really love you know, hearing from your, your coaches and, and helping. Um, as I already know that all these ideas are just going to be thinking, how do we make this happen? Because that's really my focus is on strategy and, you know, how to make things happen. So I'm already excited about what we're going to hear and, you know, can't wait to get started. People, people are asking if there's a good or unclear. Oh, well, I don't have a. Good morning, everyone. I think our team is just excited. It's Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you everyone for your pitch and kindness. And welcome to our pitch today. So today we come with a story you can So do you have a friend since you are uh, since you are growing up? Who has friend who has that since your childhood? Thank you very much. Actually, I have a friend who was since our child. And one day he became Chikikomori, who is the social withdrawal person because he couldn't successfully get a job immediately after he graduated from university. In Japan, the culture is very collective. And once you outlay become the societal norm, it's very difficult to get back to the societal norm. The more we do the research, but we notice that there are specific segments of you who, who are going through the same and similar challenges who are the youth in the juvenile world. Here is the agenda we want to share with you today in our And so who are we? My name is I and my partner. I'm Takumi. And we also have youth who who cannot join the page today. So this is the, uh, this is the uh, market analysis. So there is the active shift of youth career support, which was led by uh, basically Japanese government to the private sector. And economical analysis, uh, big companies want to do the CSR, but they don't have partner in Japan. So we have great blue ocean of CSR economics. And also we have small company needs employees. Actually more than 90% of Japanese employment is from the small business. So small business need employment, but actually because of the uh, small population of child, they're actively seeking the international labor force. But we have the labor force in Japan, which are not utilized. So we want to tackle this economical problem too. And also social problem, COVID-19 hit, it changed every process of recruitment. So they need extra support to adjust in the new environment. And also cause of the case of building is increasing. That's why homeless uh, homeless people and also those who are after they graduated from the juvenile school, those who have job don't go back, but those who doesn't have job more likely to go back. So it's necessary for them to get in a secure access to the job. Also, we have technology now. We have social emotional learning methodology offered by some business institute, which are recently established within 10 years. So we can implement new education technology, new traditional school system, and also juvenile school. So our, we want to build the, an inclusive and hopeful home and workplace for every future builder, which means the youth. And by doing that, we want to initiate long-term relaxation between uh, youth and society-oriented uh, corporates. <clears throat> Secondly, we want to empower the vulnerable young uh, career and social skills to lead a meaningful life. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to facilitate mutual understanding of inmates and society. So why why are we? Why should we choose us? It's because we observe there's a lack of social emotional skill within youth in the crisis. Like others companies usually uh, provide career skill, but they also need skill, you know, soft skill to like uh, deal with mental, with deal with emotion, 
uh, control our self-awareness and build a helpful relationship later on. So this is our service. So we're going to provide special emotional education, health development service, and also special education to those who are in need in the community and also juvenile school students. Because most of the students have ADHD or those kind of like special education requires a special education to get back to the society. So we're going to provide. We coordinate and banner sponsor the post sponsor This organization actually in Japan they are actively engaged in collaboration with United States model in Japan, Japan collaborating Japanese model and also Japan, America model and also those government are seeking the partner. Also, there is the youth employment opportunity program which is provided by. Uh, which is the uh, economical alignment. Actually, the CEO of this company is the board member of this alignment. So we can have strong connection with this company. And our initial market is the youth who are in juvenile, who are juvenile, as we know, as we've mentioned before, and Hikomori. And our like, initial market should be Tokyo, Yosohama, and Okusaka, you see all big cities in Japan. That's why, because of that, there is the population density, we can play a big impact so that we can claim more capital to implement in different locations in Japan and all over the world. And this is the business model and money flow. You can take time to look through uh, look through the old like money flow and programming. Also, there are the donors like flow. So these are money flows. And also, this is the income uh, balance model. We want to combine the donation grant model and business income model, especially the uh, these two business models so that stabilize the business itself. But also when we have get opportunity to donation grant, we can provide the big programming for your student and so we can provide sustainable uh, programming too. And here's our next board member and for the four we suggested are all you know, people who uh, have experience in educational field and have worked in the United States and both in Japan and actually our team <laughs> have me have also have contact to them. Yeah, I have been work collaborating with all of them. So we I have I have first contact to asking them to be a part of the board member or advisor to our organization. So in summary, what we will do, we will provide training for employers, both employers and supervised criminal. And the employers will receive for and for topic of uh, this one. And we also provide a youth interaction event to from you know ju juvenile criminals and the young so that they can have interaction with each other and there's no understanding gaps or assumption between the two. Thank you very much. So we have about four minutes for QA. The challenge you identified with social withdrawal, I think it's something that's impacting a lot of people around the world. Yes. How do you hope to identify those who have withdrawn from any point of contact? What's your strategy around making sure that those people can be identified and supported? Mm -hmm. Thank you. When you have family members, so family members can reach out to all or maybe their friends. Social and also in Japan, there is like a SNET as supporting group, those who are suffering from all the experiences, like those who want to work but have difficulties to join in the job market, especially the competitive job market. So they're looking for some media opportunity in between the bridge of their position as it is and also as they are, and so who they want to be. There is a big gap. So actually, there is a lot of needs of support. I think we can between the bridge between those who actually need support to the competitive job market through taking yeah. time with them. Go ahead. Um, I have this first small question and then maybe you want that. When you define youth, um, I was curious to hear the age range. And then from an audience standpoint, so you have a lot of different players and stakeholders. If I like the chart of the flow, but how do you plan to prioritize the target audience in terms of Obviously, I'm getting the youth is part of the target because they need to know about your program. Mm -hmm. But you know, the other players and stakeholders in terms of you know companies, you're saying big companies, small companies. I like to understand a little bit more strategically yes. how you're gonna start, uh, or who's more of a priority maybe in your audience. Yeah, thank you very much. 
So our focus of ODS is maybe starting from Shikikomori because juvenile school actually is a public institute. So it's gonna take time to get approval. We actually implement the curriculum. We are estimating by 2027, by uh, through from the connection between uh, uh, Shimomura Kupun, we can proactively engage in the Japanese like, juvenile system. Actually, she she also has a connection between Japan US Council. She also has a connection with Japan US Council. Actually, they are the foundation government foundation. They have great power over the Japanese uh, corporate market, also United States corporate market. They usually do the big event collaborating with uh Microsoft and Prudential, like um uh, 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 PJ Morgan, like those big companies actually invest in those institute foundation. So because we have strong relationship between Japan US Council, uh, actually we can definitely create one program. Actually, she uh, we create a program for social entrepreneur leaders. So actually, definitely we can collaborate with Japan US Council. Also, these are the actually big vendor of our programming. They have the programming of the youth actually socially, emotionally mature. But also he was the board member of the social Japanese, a Japanese economical alignment. So he has very strong influence on Japanese small businesses around the, are all over the Japan. And I have first contact with them. So even though I couldn't get them a board member, I have strong connection in the market and also resources. So definitely we can start uh, asking them some advice and support input uh, from you know next like seven days or something. We can definitely improve our plan. Yes. Um, and so where's the uh, how do you make money? Yes, thank you very much. Who's who's paying? Who's paying you or yes. where do you guys? Yeah, thank you very much. So we are, this is the money, bro. So the money comes to our organization from the government or sector. This is the grant space. There's a two source of grant. One is from the educational department. One is the court system. Those are one is Hikikomori and also one is for the juvenile school. But it's going to take time, but it's going to be stable once we get the grant sustainably. And one is a local district and juvenile collection facility. So this takes a little, uh, Little less time compared with like governmental sector. This is this guy. They're looking for some partnership. They can outsource education in juvenile school, but there's a procedure we have to go through. But we can definitely get into that. Also, grants like foundation and sponsored company. We can definitely can find those type of people. Also, this uh, service is much easier. So this by sponsor and people sponsor is the main source of money. Also, we're going to ask the donation. Actually, similar organization back in Japan has has collected a big amount of money for supporting youth. So in Japan, found founding market, there is a big need of supporting youth. But the problem is they don't have much organization to donate to. So that's why uh, we are expecting the donation from the Japanese like Thank you so much. I don't know how to keep that. I No, what's my new? You're going to hear a gentle code through the watch, QA, and hit the bell. Yes. How do you change this? Oh, here we go. Move forward. Well, we're having all kinds of tech issues today. Like so, yeah, sometimes you need to be ready to do your presentation without the tech. But you said someone will just press the button. What did you What did you all do last time? Did you use the? Yeah, just do it manually. 
Yeah, that's the right answer. Oh, okay. Maybe you just put on the Did you use the flipper? Oh, you did it manually? Okay. Let's do it manually. All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Today, we're going to be presenting about our social impact business uh, called Holy Bloody. Uh, we'll start. And this is a, an online platform to increase participation in civic life by um, simplifying the election process and promoting political literacy. Uh, my name is Caro, and I'm a political science student here. Uh, my name is Vedant, and I'm focusing on psychology. Hello, this is Shruti, I'm focusing on economics. And just uh, to clarify, we said that it's going to be initially an online platform, but we have plans for the future to maybe adapt it to go through mail or like pop-up locations uh, to provide that access also to people who don't have access to technology. So one of the most uh, prominent problems when it comes to election campaigns is low voting turnout. And one of the most underrated reasons for that is the complexity and the non-specificity of the information provided about the candidates to the public. So what our polybody nonprofit um, organization wishes to do is to simplify that information and present it to the public and we can answer how that happens. Okay. So besides the uh, problem of low voting turnout, which is, for example, this past midterm elections, only about 30% of young adults went to the uh, to vote. And the other part of the problem is the lack of political knowledge. A lot of people don't understand how the system works. A lot of people don't know how American government works and like the structure and all of the, like the who gets what, when and how. Uh, as you can see with this test that we have here, like only half of the uh, population knows like what are the three branches of government. And like this creates a social economic uh, gap because like only the elite pretty much has access to more developed content about that. And so we want to democratize that knowledge. And we're gonna do so through a premium uh, model. So we are gonna have access for free to classes from political scientists and specialists um, to teach uh, the population the basics that they need to understand to vote smart. And also then we're gonna have a subscription for people who want to go beyond that and also want to uh, actually get into politics themselves and uh, become candidates. So the workshop would be like eight weeks long and it would have access to also political scientists helping you understand like how to set up a campaign and all that kind of stuff. And we also uh, hope to bring minorities into this with the free part of the education because the participation of women, LGBTs, and Black people in politics is still very low as well. So for the future, we also plan to expand this uh, platform to help match the needs of the constituency to the proposals from the candidates. And we would do so with a model that's similar to personality tests online. So it would have like an artificial intelligence who would um, test what the person wants and needs as a type of like quiz and give the results of who would be the candidate that most meets their ideas and what they want from a politician. Uh, we have a model like a demo of this and we can sh show you during the Q&A. So if you are like, for example, divided between two candidates, the system would help you decide which one is gonna be best for you according to their uh, plans. And this is relevant because we are living in a very divided and polarized uh, political scenario nowadays. And people need to make more informed decisions. And that would also incentivize people to participate more in the political life. All right, so for the competition, uh, right now we don't really have like a lot of competition in the market, but in the future, if we have any competition, we already collaborate. Um, so here we go, the business model. We were thinking about the crowdfunding and getting a premium membership um, playing the subscription model of our, of our platform. So um, 
So we're gonna um, have the marketing advertisement in the very beginning, which we'll need to run through like Google Ads to see on the screen. And then as we will go into the marketing and then, you know, um, getting donations and volunteers from people. Um, at the same time, we could also need the government grant access um, and then the subscription the subscription model for the eight weeks thing will be like $99, which will have like, um, which will give the mentorship for the uh, political presence, like, um, you know, like how to come with everybody. So this is like a bottom up approach. Uh, we are starting by with the California. And for that, we need the, the $750 thing that later, later on we decide that you will make it nationwide. And yeah, so this is just like a wrap up of our solution. We want to simplify, educate, integrate, and incentivize. Thank you so much. We are very open to so mentorship, and we want to win this so we can get the prize and start investing in our company. Thank you. I have a quick question for you all. Was a presentation. Thank you. Um, so with both your turn, I guess a couple questions. Are we starting with the youth vote in terms of getting them to subscribe to your app? Is that the demographic you're going after? And given that we only had 30% of participation in the last election, so how do you get people even interested in the app itself? Maybe they're just, just you know, disenchanted with voting itself. So how do you get them to be interested in learning what the branches of government are and stuff? So basically, uh, we see Psychology, that that's right. Sure. Yeah. So 40% people, um, that's a metric that we have, but at the same time, the reason that we are trying to highlight here is that whenever we, whenever there is like an explanation of the candidate, their own testimony proposals, that's very complicated. So I met a writing specialist recently and I asked her about this thing and she said that her whole family struggles to understand what's written and her father has just given up on voting completely because they don't understand what they are saying. So I'm, what, we are, what we are trying to do is that we want to make a questionnaire-like platform where we extract specific information from those proposals. And then we present it based on what the what the citizens are interested in. So slowly, as this book grows, more and more people would want to more and more political parties would want to subscribe to this model because they would want to be more enterprising to a platform which is being accessed more often by people. Why would people do so? Because everyone wants to participate in politics. In in some sense, they want a sense of power. They want a sense of um, because democracy is about ruling by the people. Only because we are failing them on these interfaces is why we need this, these kind of platforms, which increase the probability of more people coming in. And our uh, target audience is not just the youth. Uh, it can be the youth can be nodes, which can be part of bigger networks, which get uh, centralized to these to this access. Uh, for example, old people, maybe the population, if they are like they're, they're disappointed with the kind of presentation that come out, so we can simplify that thing for them even for the youth and apart from the uh, uh, like advising sessions you mentioned about getting into politics and getting minorities into politics we also have uh, advising sessions for youth who come like who become voters like people who turn 18 so like there is a lot of things that we are doing apart from the election campaign so election campaign just happens once a year probably and then there is a lot of year the rest of the year to keep doing something and that's part of what we're doing apart from that yeah our marketing strategy is also going to focus on saying things like, oh, are you tired of not understanding uh, how politicians um, describe their ideas and their projects? So like, we can help you. And then maybe we could even have a type of uh, incentive or like uh, something that would really like be catchy for people to want to just like explore our platform, but we still don't have that marketing strategy very set. Yeah, I think. You mean like the implication or something like that could be interesting. Um, I was kind of along the lines of Shaheen in terms of, you know, if part of the audience is not engaged, could be hard to get them engaged. But one um, basic thing I was a clear on, are you a for-profit or a non-profit? Okay, so non-profits actually in Google get a thousand dollars a month to do ads for free. So when I see you, you know, I mean, I love that part of your budget, but just so you know, if you have your own five one three, you're eligible for Google for a thousand dollars a month to do ads. So just I just saved you a thousand dollars. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So uh, um, I, you, you mentioned something in actual response to Shaheen that I thought was interesting too. You talked about the parties maybe getting involved. I I wonder if one of the challenges actually is going to be the balance between obviously giving the, the unbiased information and the perception from your audience that it's actually um, 
you know, that there is integrity, that the information is not kind of, you know, motivated one way or another, because if you start getting funded or something by some of the parties, right, the question is, well, so I don't know, because you kind of alluded to that. So do you feel like it's totally neutral and all your content is going to be actually not involving like yeah. candidates and things like that. Yeah, I was going to ask the question, like, how do you get by that tax coming in with millions of dollars right. for these people? That, uh, we that we are, actually don't people. want to receive funding from the parties because we feel like that would make the process a little skewed, right? Okay. But we just want them, like, if they want to present their information, you know, so if they want to simplify what they are already proposing in public speeches and all of that, they can so it goes back to the fact that if this was to be implemented by the central government, that would go against the freedom of expression. But because we are doing it as people, we can, what we are basically doing is we are simplifying information by our own initiative. Once this gains popularity, political parties would want that information to be presented in that format over time. Thank you. <laughs> For the people by the beach. Yes. We have a Hello, everyone. My name is Amelia, and I am a college student. I'm actually a college student who started their first year in the middle of the 2020 pandemic, meaning that that feeling of loneliness was higher than ever. And even after I came back a year later, I could tell that my social skills had suffered and I no longer felt like I could build social relationships the same way I could before. And this made me feel even lonelier, even though now I was on campus with my peers, able to interact socially. I was feeling like I didn't have any, anybody to talk to or anybody to turn to. And sadly, this is not something that is uncommon because I am not alone. And having a social support system can make so much of a difference and just feeling like you can connect to other people. And more than 50% of college students are reported to feel lonely at some point in their college experience. And after a long night of brainstorming, my team and I, Mahir and Kadi, who is not present right now, thought, what can we do about such a common problem? So we would like to present to you our very first prototype of our app, the Hello app. My partner Mahir can go ahead and walk through it. This is our first prototype of the Hello app. The app opens up to the home page, which we are calling the Hello page. The page has an uplifting code that changes every day. It greets you based on the time of the day and has a button called the Hello button. Pressing this button connects you with someone who is similar to you. We will be using an algorithm who will connect your profile with someone else's profile based on your demographics. That could be your college major, your age, or your country of origin. If you really vibe with someone and you want to take talk to them furthermore, we have the social section. If you both choose to connect with each other, now this is where you will be added to and you can see each other's name and your profile. You can text with them or schedule another call. And if you're not comfortable talking on an anonymous video call, we do have a post section where you can make anonymous posts about issues that you might be going through. And then 
people can comment on it anonymously. We will have bot moderators here, just like Reddit, so that we can ensure the safety of the users. There's the educational component with articles, videos, and we also have some a playlist feature where you can listen to some music. The main purpose of the Hello app is to give you a platform to connect with someone who is similar to you, not necessarily a professional counselor, but someone who might be going through the same stuff as you. The only question is, are you willing to say a new hello? Thank you. Presentation was pretty limited. No? Yes. Is the name Hello app not already saved? Or is it like available? It's available. Mm -hmm. Wait. You secure it? That's the part now. <laughs> Um, so where, where does the money come from? So because it's an app, uh, we do not need a lot of initial investment because we do have we have the prototype, we can start coding it. We do not need a lot of initial investment. The hard part in the beginning would be connecting to colleges and we don't need money for it, but we do need time and mentorship to convince them that their students need this app. So the, so the money, but the money more revenue would come through membership. Yeah, but yeah. charging the colleges and not the students because the finances can be uh, an even bigger stress that we don't want to contribute to. We want to help them right. not cause their problems. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then we can, uh, is the target college students or high school students? It's or? college students specifically. Okay. Um, for us, especially because when it comes to high school students, you get into the, the problem of, I don't know, like minors interacting with people who aren't minors, you know, college students and um, with college students, they're adults. They can, yeah. they have the freedom to do whatever it is they want to do in compliance with our rules, yeah. right? And what would you charge to college? Do you know yet? No, we don't know the exact number. It will be based on the number of students they have. And also, we're thinking about something to charge more to private schools and subsidizing it for like public schools. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is actually like we understand that a lot of colleges, you know, they have resources to connect people um, to professional therapists. Uh, but we thought maybe this our app would be helpful because speaking as college students, we don't always want to speak to therapists all the time. Sometimes we just want more of a casual setting where we can vent, right? And also we have noticed that some of the interfaces of the app, the apps that are that our school specifically provided is not very navigatable and it just feels too impersonal and it, we just weren't finding the benefits of it and our interface is actually very easy to navigate and it's very casual low stakes if you just want to talk to somebody this is where you go have you have you uh tested this with any friends at all any um, yeah uh, like us uh, friends yeah i mean have you just have you tested this out anybody yet? we had one person last night give us our opinion. <laughs> And then we talked to other people, um, just giving us the general overview because we actually came up with this very late at night and it would not be appropriate to have people come over at like three in the morning. Okay. <laughs> okay. But um, yes. Do you have statistics on uh, or research on how many kids are feeling lonely in college and, um, and what they're like, I don't know. I we're a little bit beyond your age. So okay. what how how do college students make friends? Like is this how is this this is the new way that, that college students would make friends is through through online apps? But it feels like kind of like online dating, but but platonic, right? Yeah. Is that how is that there's a retail on that? Yeah. So as we shared, there are numbers and usually like it's a very generic number. Usually 50% of college students do report going through loneliness. It could be even serious depression. And because there are like millions of calls, there are 50 million in the US and over 200 million in the world. That gives us like 7.5 million or 100 million of people who might potentially use something like this. And we do know that colleges do provide a lot of mental health resources and this could potentially be part of it. Okay. And um, sorry, uh, we do understand that it could be just very easy to just go out and just socially interact with people. But I found that one of the common problems that maybe this would be able to like overcome for people trying to make friends is they wouldn't have to necessarily interact socially in person because a lot of us suffer from 
like social anxiety and just like and just, sorry, 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 and just like just being shy, having trouble reaching out to people. And this would eliminate that barrier, right? So it would just make it so much smoother for people to talk, especially because there's no pressure. You never have to talk to them again. So, yeah. Getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today we are here to present about Hey Fi. Hey, I'm Julia. I'm Harika. And I am Petrus. So, to start off, I would like to share a little story of mine. This is my grandma. My grandmother, she worked hard her whole life. She raised seven kids and 10 grandchildren. And uh, throughout her life, one of her biggest dreams, and I often hear she's saying, was to achieve financial independence. And uh, throughout the time, you know, all the, you know, she, she could see all, all her investments, all of her savings, you know, being, you know, uh, like uh, reduced and attacked by inflation over time. And uh, the price, despite of all of that, you know, as a, her grandson, I found it very, very hard to see it happening. Um, unfortunately, my grandmother, she passed away last year um, during my first week here at Soka, and uh, she could not fulfill her dream of financial independence. But very soon I realized that my grandmother, she was not alone. In fact, she was just one of the many Brazilian hard workers that lack suffer from the lack of financial education. And uh, there are so many things in our society, including the thought that only rich people can invest. And uh, it has become a generational problem. And in order to tackle that, uh, we have come, with some, come up with some solutions, but here is the issue. In fact, right now, 80% of the Brazilian population is in debt. And of those people, almost 29% have already defaulted. So it has become a great, great problem. In Brazil, we have less than 2.5% of the population investing in the stock market. Just for comparison, 58% of Americans do. We have a data that in 2013, we, have more, we had more people in jail than investing in the stock market. That simply proved to be very important. There was something very included in our society and it has to change. And uh, that definitely affects, you know, our ability as a developing country to grow and to develop further. Okay, so to tackle this problem, HeyFi solution is to provide financial education for high school and middle school students as they represent the future generation of Brazil people through a gamified experience, and they represent 22.7 million people. So our, we want to create two main platforms, so a website and an app. And once you join the app, you can see an option for high school students and also middle school students. And besides the content in which like people will get to know about those main topics related to financial education, such as budgeting, we really want to make this interactive. So through videos, through games, through, through, through tests and through rewards. So for example, in games, we can create like fake money in the website. So children can start understanding how they can budget the money or even how to invest in a very basic way. So in terms of like, what do we mean by interactive? It's like such those platforms, something very colorful with characters, something very easy and that catches students attention. So they're being able to truly get interested about the app. And in terms of how like 
people will get to know right about like our platforms. So we have two main strategies. The first one is to reach out to schools. And actually like I have previous experiences in like reaching out to like educational institutions to be able to implement educational programs. And we really wanna make sure that we can address both public and private schools to make sure that those people from public schools and underprivileged populations are getting access to this material and also through advertisement specifically targeting parents so that they can encourage their children to join our platform. And in terms of what companies in the market are doing it, so basically in Brazil, there are some resources, as you can see, about financial education, but all of them are specific, specifically for adults and not for children. And our adults need to have the financial aid to be able to, no, sorry, not financial aid, to have uh, money to be able to pay for those platforms. Are they able to, for example, be in a company and be employees so that the company can pay for them? or they need to have a very specific um, knowledge about those like technical language to be able to understand. Most of them are paid, the ones that are not paid, for example, YouTube videos, they are not interactive at all. And for example, I put it here, it's like two hour long videos and the language is very technical. So it's actually very hard to understand. And in the sense, it kind of brings the perspective again, as Petra's mentioned to the Brazilian society that like investing or understanding about money is not for everyone. Here's our business model. Uh, we contacted the Brazilian investment of my slash my company to come up with these numbers. Uh, they, they, they're these numbers, but here are the numbers that are provided with your skills. Uh, this table is our annual cost projection in the early stage. So afterwards, we might only pay for the cost to maintain our operation and keep the complete updating. So, and in terms of uh, uh, expected annual revenue, there are three ways. Um, first, uh, advertisement that can be uh, included, included in the platform. And we're going to uh, reach out to banks and investment companies that are interested in our uh, our services. And besides that, there are uh, like YouTube uh, monetization and funding from local government and education sponsors. So what we uh, we are looking for is thirty two thousand dollars that represent the product cost uh, to start out our business. And we would like to ask for a feedback and advice. Uh, having mentors will be um, necessary to ensure our business is long lasting and effective. Yeah, you know. So um, my grandmother, my grandmother, fortunately, she could not fulfill her dream due to the lack of information. And what I want to make sure is that the future generations have the opportunity and the means to do so. Please let us help change that. Thank you very much. Um, so, you're targeting young and high schoolers, which again is really compared to what's on the market. Mm -hmm. My question is because I'm not going to be down here with Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, what is the technology access in this? Because mm -hmm. I would expect also maybe a lack of um, equity related to access to technology also. But I don't know because yeah. I we yeah. First of all, thank you so much for your question. So we, we did a research about that. And one of the reasons that, for example, we decided for middle school and high school students is because majority of them actually have like a cell phone. But in general, in terms of like general access to education, 80 per, 88% of public schools have access to like Wi-Fi and computers. And actually the government is making um, investments to reach 100%. So in the sense, schools will have access to this platform. And uh, obviously, um, for you know, uh, this for reasons we have 100 percent, nearly 100 percent of the private schools with access to degrees. So the plan would be to grow and reach all of the schooling network. And some of the revenues that come from advertisers on the site, uh, right? Like, so would it be banks and investment firms and that yes. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how do you avoid kind of the bias of that? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. So uh, I think that uh, it's solely relying on them uh, because there certainly could be a certain bias there. Uh, we, we should also, you know, try to focus on other ways of uh, sources of income so that we cannot be solely dependent on them or their will so that we can maintain a clean, unbiased platform that gives, you know, standardized and like uh, informational knowledge for all uh, the students in middle and high school. I think because one of the challenges you may have, right, I'm a student, I'm not super educated on this, and yeah. 
fun fair work, put my money, put an advertisers on there for the stock market, let's say, and then never advertisers on there for life insurance. Yeah. Right? You know, it may not be the best, you know, they might get influenced by that advertiser. So I just think that's one of the things we have one. I totally agree. We have a, a very good example, which is uh, Duolingo. Uh, you know, the way they maintain, they manage to keep their education free is through advertisement, right, between one level and the other. And uh, they are not necessarily financial institutions only, you know, in our case. We could have just general, just like YouTube advertisement. Um, so uh, not necessarily only focusing on the financial institutions, but uh, in general advertisement for all the population. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for your feedback. We definitely put thought into that. Something that I was thinking is that like our goal is not necessarily to make the fund. So like our content itself is not going to be biased by like the companies. I know that for example, having the company there might make children's bias. But for example, if we are talking about investment or if we're talking about health insurance, we want to share that, make sure that in our content and, and like the materials that we provide, we can like give various like different um, company so that at least children know that even though this is advertisement that is in the platform, there are different options that they can look for. So the idea is just to propel through the content, the students to think by themselves. And even if there is uh, advertisements from investment companies, we have to rest assured that our content will give them enough tools to guide them through making the best decisions so that they are not influenced towards. If they see that, they have the ability to think, okay, is this advertisement a good option for me? I have learned the platform that maybe not. Let me look into that. So that's what we're looking for. Have you, have you looked into uh, offering books rather educational material we, on there as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have thought about that. Uh, we are very open on the uh, approaches that we can utilize to you know, reach out a bigger population and as, uh, increase our investments in our revenue as well. Uh, so selling books, having educational content in the market, and even perhaps in the end, you know, catching a certain type of like investment uh, opportunities for the students uh, through reward points or something like that, like a little streak or even you know some uh, some uh, in the end according to their performance. We have tests that can assess a basic benchmark so that we can know that, you know, every student is getting the same uh, quality and the same time of it for me. Yeah, so hello everyone. Hi, um, my name is Alice and I'm Shreya. So yeah, and we are healthy slide. So uh, like, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present our idea of this platform. Um, um, so my dad came over to the U.S. from Vietnam at the age of 15 and had no family support. And so he had to hustle throughout high school and college. And because he had like such a major like event, he didn't really get the time to really like sit and process and that really and look at his mental health. And because of that, he didn't really talk about it. Therefore, he didn't talk with me until when I got to college and was when I even knew what mental health was and how important it was for me because I going through my own like journey of acknowledging my own mental health and I realized like it is extremely important for like youth to really like understand how to like identify when they are in need and how to find help for that and so for our mission our healthy slice is to um, find ways to bring resources to um, resettle families yeah, and uh, this problem is actually global, as you can see from the figures. Also, the largest number of refugees they settle in California. There are large organizations such as the UNHCR that 
um, provides mental health support, but because it's such a large organization, they don't re realize like some of the local um, resources that are available. So what Healthy Place wants to do is to like to really help with their cause is to uh, work with local organizations to bring local resources to these health families. Yeah, and we will be focusing on the two major issues. Like there are various issues that these refugees they face, but one of them is like poor mental health, and the other one is the lack of employment opportunities. So, like, what product are we offering? Is like first is a comic book to provide mental health support to these displaced children, and the other one is the art. Uh, it is an e-commerce platform this, that is art and craft e -hack. And which deals with the promotion and sales of the art and crafts items produced by the failing population. So, as you can see, the potential market of size, market size of comic books that is like North America is one of the second largest comic markets worldwide. And like, even if you look at the um, like craft market, it's like uh, US has like three uh, billion US dollars, like having uh, sales on. Uh, if you look at like our solution of healthy life, it has a dual purpose. It is a noble solution as a, as a business solution. So this is our comic that we created, a sample comic. And the reason why we chose to do like a, a comic form is it's a really fun, interactive way for kids to really le learn about mental health instead of if you gave it to them in like a manual or guideline, mm -hmm. probably wouldn't learn from it. And um, we are doing a print form because we are unsure if all of the children have access to internet or like have a tablet or computer available. And we found that um, according to Sherry's friend, they prefer reading paper instead of ebooks. Okay. So like last night I interacted by, with like eight of my school friends and they were like, um, they were in junior high school and they told me that comics would be more interesting to them rather than just reading a kid or a man. So like, what is our business model? So first, like, uh, she has created a comic, which is like on a digital platform. And we will be sending that comic to like one or two uh, of the foundations. So like, uh, interestingly, like SUA has a collaboration with TR Foundation and it works with the refugees. So we will be sending the uh, um, uh, digital file to them and they will be translating that so, uh, refugees who work in the foundation they will be translating the content into the minor languages and in that way we are also generating economic opportunities for them and after that they will be sending that those books to the refugee camps since they already have those networks and they will also be going there to train those people about like train especially the children about the mental health issues and like how to combat when they face certain kinds of like uh, situations like isolation and distress also on this way like we will be creating our e-commerce platform and the officials of TR Foundation they will actually recognize the potential elder candidates who are actually capable of produce giving us any valuable artifact or resource so we also want to utilize their potential once we get that information we will list down all those products in our on our website and through our connect with the different retailers uh, like we will form a network where they can purchase those products from our website and whatever will be the net amount that will get distributed between the refugees and the healthy slides. So like that was our model and as you can see like, like with this it's a six month month of investment plan and like we invest a little but we get a great amount of profit to it. So what are we asking for you for is like mentorship connections to like non-profit organizations who work with such like people like refugees and also connections to local artifact business. So like I am to uh, like next week I'm going to TR Foundation to work for that. Like Alice has already worked for them and this year I'm like in the in that program. So yeah please support our healthy slices and make us friends. <laughs> so is the comic book already written? No, that was only a sample. Okay. And and what do you uh, uh I, I guess what do you need to actually fulfill a whole comic book? Uh, you would recommend we are like I drew the comic book with the sample, but we would like to like have one. 
um, what come with with them. Right. Okay, so you're it's, you're not doing it alone. You would need a fourth group to kind of help you write the story, create the illustrations, and create the illustrations. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we will be doing that on a digital platform, so we don't need any cost of like papers and stationery. But uh, since like she was working on the tablet, so we did not require any of such things. Yeah, so that work can be done on like digital platform. But you would, but you still print a copy, right? Yeah, yes. right. Okay. We are doing on digital so that they can translate the whole text into the minor languages. Oh, I see. And they can get a print. Yeah. You wouldn't print it for. Yeah, you mentioned my, one of my questions about translation. You went through throughout the pitch. Um, you know, TR already, so I'm not going to introduce you to them. There is another organization called Saha, I believe. And it's not exactly a refugee, but it's like a group who is moving here. Again, they're not as a refugee status, but don't you know, ended up in a different country, not understanding you know, how things work or whatever. Um, so I have to connect with them um, as well. Um, I yeah, I like the idea. I like that so far your organization is you know doing one product, you know, that's gonna be replicated. So um I yeah, I think there is a huge potential to make an impact. Really, really exciting uh, solution to a real real challenge. How do you hope to inspire those that commit to the comic book to create their own art as a way to understanding and processing? Uh, and expressing their simple way of being and mental health. Um, so one of the ideas as I was creating this comic book was thinking like once we like have like a stable platform, we would invite some of these children to like create their own comic books and we could then and they would write their own stories. They share their own stories about their struggles and we could like share it to like everyone else. There's some power to that, actually. Yeah. There are a lot of cities, especially in California, that have a ton of organizations that work directly with refugees. Are you solely focused on camps? Or are you open to work with those who are settling some of these major cities? No, we are open to those also who are settled in major cities also. But like the comic book is like, that will be focused on the children. And the second, like, website that is focused on the elderly people in the refugee community. So, do you see uh, just one comic book being made, or do you see multiple comic books? How do you envision that? I think uh, we were thinking multiple comic books being made, not like the first one is about mental health, but the other one could be like educating about the wash system. Um, there are like various ideas that when we were creating this comic book, we could write on them. So there's potential for other topics yeah. there that are in the wings for you guys. Um, maybe you said it in the beginning, I apologize. I'm not here, I understand the link between the name of the organization, actually, coming book, because health is like a theme of more of a, of a no writing or something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I wasn't, maybe you said it and I apologize, but I don't understand the link between the name and what you're doing. So, a name of a brand? Yeah, the, the uh, name health health Oh, yeah. So that is like Shreya and Alice. So it becomes lives. And it's like healthy. So that's for like for the like mental health and like promoting the overall health. Yeah, it was just, I mean, I'm, something I've been thinking about as you're getting more serious about this because, again, I think there's nothing in the name that would be related to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Hello, nice to see y'all. My name is Melissa, and this is my sister, Lily. And together, we're working on our social impact project called HERS to address gender based violence and raise awareness about the issue. So, many women unfortunately share the experience of having fear when they're walking down the street, especially if they're alone or it's getting weak into the day. And um, this is a statistic that I think that. It's really interesting. Like thirty percent of surveyors um, in this research that um, that are from identi that identified as a woman responded that always or very frequently they chose other modes to go around the city or uh, outright skipped going out outside altogether just because um, they'd rather like not go outside. And it's so scary. After about thirty percent of women were surveyed and asking them why, one of the reasons the main reason was. They were worried about their safety, possibility of sexual assault, and that was the number one worry. And the SDGs that our project is attempting to address is uh, the good health and well-being, uh, gender equality, and sustainable cities. And so these are all recent headlines signifying how pervasive this issue of gender violence is. And this is just like a map that's just mapping out everywhere in the world that it's not only a U.S. problem, but it's an everywhere type of problem that's pervasive. So our idea is bringing women's empowerment through fashionable uh, safety devices. And what sparked this idea is that in our personal experience, and as a, like we grew up, our mom would always tell us, Anytime that you go outside, make sure that you're bringing something with you, whether it be your backpack, your heavy backpack, your umbrella, and make sure that you have something with you so that you feel safe. But also, like in the case that you need to use it, you're ready to um, defend yourself. So our solution to this issue is to create an appealing, compact, and discreet product to not only increase its use, but also address gender-based violence. And through the creation or that sell of this product, we hope to donate 10% of the proceeds to grassroots women-led feminist organizations, specifically in the city of Mexico, like Fondos Unidas. And this is our team. So it's my, it's myself, Lilia, uh, my sister, and also our mom. <laughs> and one of the reasons that we think that we're capable, we want, we're capable of, going through with this project because Lisa already has some experience with online retail and um, I'm also I have experience with online marketing and our mom and all of us are pretty artistic leaders and artistic and yeah we want to be able to bring this artistic side and um, apply it to our designs that we're creating for these products. So yesterday I went around the cafeteria and started surveying other SOCA students that I know, and a common sentiment that they shared is, I don't feel safe because men could attack me. I'm more likely to be attacked than a guy. These similar experiences are yet another indicator of how prevalent this issue is, considering that of the 10 people I interviewed, all 10 of them mentioned this was an issue for them. So one of our competitors in this market is uh, a company called Tiny Protectors, which is has the same idea, but for us, we're different in that they are only um, for the profit and for us, it's more about the awareness. Uh, so we, what we will do is take these safety devices and we would also, we would sell them, but also try to raise awareness while we're um, selling these products. And we also hope to bring innovation and style to these subjects. So our business model would be through the revenue uh, bought by selling of the vehicle safety alarm. We also hope to find wholesale suppliers, to, uh, domestic, to keep the production costs low and therefore make prices more affordable to our customers. Because right now, our competitor, Tiny Protect is selling like alarms like $30, $40. And personally, I'm a college student. I don't have money. Although as cute as it may be, I'm not personally going to go out and buy something that's out of my reach. And we estimate the price of making an alarm. Uh, one of the products we're thinking about is a safety alarm. And these products are common. However, we want to have these products, but also when we're selling them, 
again, make people aware about the issue because although it is known to happen like amongst women, I don't think men are actually aware of this issue. Um, when we were interviewing people yesterday uh, in the night, a lot of people, I asked some of my um, male friends and they said that they never had that experience of being afraid at night or walking outside alone. And thank you guys. And not uh, real quick. Um, so, first of all, you guys don't feel unsafe on SoCal campus. <laughs> you know, we come from a lot of places around the world, yeah. so that's interesting. But um, it's just a few said an alarm. Can you explain? Because I never use that kind of product. I just know they're right. Can you yeah. do it in a stroke way so my other uh, peers can ask questions? But can you explain how the safety alarm works? And does that trigger anything to like police or like? Yeah, we were thinking of like potential products like this was one of the designs. It would have something attached to the back that it's kind of like you pull it so you don't accidentally like trigger the alarm. And then that noise would just keep getting louder and louder to kind of just notify. But one of the potential things that we were also thinking about doing is adding that sort of technology where if you are in a situation that's potentially dangerous, you can also contact someone, not only like the police or like a close contact or something like that. Yeah, we would that's, that's all through that. You can it to the university's police or the police department or something like that because it's just an alarm sounding. Yeah, we were also thinking about like adding technology to it, just but that would also like raise the cost. And I don't know if that would be affordable to everyone, but that is another potential idea that we would think about. And I don't mean to be flippant, but like, why would you just have them carry a hammer? <laughs> yeah, is it, does it? It wouldn't be really portable. And I think if you yeah. saw someone with a hammer in their purse, you kind of be afraid. <laughs> yeah. So you wanna, have something that is not um it's portable and discreet and you can carry it around like if i were to be dragging around a camera i don't think well i just know like you're grabbing a camera you'd be the last person that body would attack I'm yeah out, right? so i'm just wondering the reason i'm saying that and i don't need to flip it but like part of it is like to um show like you that you have this because like uh, people who put that they have a alarm out in front of their house Compared to people who don't, yeah. don't get their house broken in it quite as often, right? Yeah. So, like, somehow we tour um, them um, when they know that they got some on the backpack. I, mean, I just would encourage, like, yeah. some way to awareness, like, let's not hide it, let's show that. Like, yeah, this, that was also one of the, um, we were interviewing people, 80% said that they would want something that's discreet, dis discreet and another 80% were like, yeah, we want something to, like, signify that I have this just in case you're trying to do this. But yeah, I think you. you know that when women carry weapons, it's usually used against them when they're attacked. Yeah, so yeah. That, that was a really. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of things to say. One is there's actually a, a large uh, women's health company called First. So you just might want to think about that. Yeah, I that was just like the last I think. Like, oh no, worries. I'm, just, I'm a lawyer in the room, so I'm just yeah. gonna bring that up too. And then the other thing I have a question for, because to your point, there's a lot of these alarm. I mean, I have a 12 year old daughter. She's yeah. already aware of gender violence. And I love it all trying to trying to sort this out. She knows all about these little alarms you can get on the internet, and it's all like it's TikTok. There's yeah. YouTubers are talking about that. So, how do you differentiate your your product pipeline to to all of the other companies that are pitching to these young girls, right, and the women? Yeah. So, because we're like in a competitive market, we're going to be forced to like innovate. And right now, like the trend is kind of to have like something that is what is more like cute and trendy, but that could uh, attract like younger people to actually carry these things around. Like for me personally, I would I wouldn't buy something like a full on like taser or something like that, just because it would look weird. But I don't think for me it's something I would personally carry around. We're next, and actually, have one more, which is electronic. The balance. Thank you. 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 Thank
Oh, I would. I know. I just don't need Okay, there's that too. It's I I'm to show you. I have. I'm just not one. Yeah. I think it Kind of the top Hi, my name is Jet. I'm from Indonesia and I'm majoring in life sciences. Hi, my name is Asis. I'm from Nepal and I'm majoring in economics. Together, we're building a, a platform called Bright Future that will help bridge the gap for Nepali high school students looking for a U.S. college education. Our business idea emerges from my personal experience. After high school, I applied to 21 U.S. colleges and I got rejected from 20. And I got accepted into only one college, but no financial aid. Uh, I was just devastated because my whole life uh, coming to U.S. was my only one dream. And I was working hard with my entire primary, secondary, high, high school. But that rejection just got me like sad. However, I didn't stop. I started teaching uh, students in my hometown, especially who were poor. So while uh, teaching, I just kept uh, continually applying. And next year, I got better resources. I got better mentorship. And that's how I was able to come into Soka University. And analyzing my story into the larger Nepali story, every year, uh, 10 to 12,000 Nepali students, they apply for the US colleges. but 8,500 students, they seldom apply for the financial aid. So there is a huge uh, gap between the uh, demand of a Nepali student and the supply of scholarship. And the major problem for this scenario is the lack of organized information to really apply. And second is mentorship to help them find the right college, uh, find the good uh, scholarship, and also uh, help them navigate through the uh, writing essay and also finding themselves what is their true interest and what is their true passion. So our solution is building a platform that will streamline the process of both researching and applying for programs and scholarships. We're also going to be providing mentorships throughout the process so that uh, students can have guidance. This is an urgent matter because with the increased use of internet, uh, there needs to be an effort to organize information. And we believe that students should not be denied an education because they can't find funds and scholarships to help them um, go to college. So we built a website mock-up that lays out features that we want on our platform. For example, we have a search filter that will help students look for scholarships in a given location and help them see what the everything about the scholarship and program, as well as apply right through our website. And so that decreases the amount of uh, confusion that students have in regards to the application process. We also have a matchmaking um, process that helps pairs students with the appropriate mentors based on interests and a variety of factors. And I would love to go over uh, this mock-up mock with you uh, later in the Q&A section if you want. So compared to our competitors, we offer a concise application and a cost efficient mentorships. So for example, in the Common App, you can't, uh, you don't really have the functionality to research about a scholarship. You can only apply and each will give you resources to research do not really apply. So we're putting those two things together 
and then also offering internships that will guide our students. So our target market is a Nepalese student who are 10 to 12,000 every year, and we are targeting for 10% of them. So it will be around 1,000 in our first year. And going into the business model, uh, there are two parts. One is application and information, which will be free of cost for the student. And second is a mentorship. We try to generate some revenue from the mentorship and that will help us to sustain the business. And mentorship will be in the three part, bronze, silver, and gold, depending upon the number of students in uh, each session. And our bronze category is around $120. It is almost like uh, four times uh, cheaper than what uh, generally uh, Nepalese students are getting through the consultancy coaching center. And even those coaching centers uh, do not have the exact Nepali student uh, studying in the US as their mentor. Which is, these two things are our very big uh, competitive advantages. And this is our pen, uh, income statement. We have gone into a lot of details for the cost of mentors and pricing for uh, uh, our mentees and how we are going to pay. We have done lots of research. And 10% of annual income will go for the uh, donation or scholarship for the inclusivity of marginalized community and poor people so they can, they can come into our platform. Right. So that was your turn. We need your help to build a network of colleges and programs to help our young scholars. We're looking for three mentors that are experts in the education field and who have, ex who have experience in mentorship. We're also looking for funding to help kickstart our website. So let's, let's connect and let's build a bright future. This potential scalability of it, but I want to understand actually the that potential scalability, which is um, I like that you focus starting in Nepal. I think it's very hard as a startup. Mm -hmm. Um could that be for any foreign student eventually? I mean, are they critical difference in I don't know US universities mm -hmm. for it well enough, but um I'm assuming foreign students, many of them are learned in the second category of foreign Yes, so that's the great question. Uh, there is a lot of uh, growth opportunity for our business, and we chose Nepal because I'm in Bali and I have first-hand experience there. I have my friend uh, Jade is from Indonesia and can even expand our business to Indonesia and other developing countries. So it is definitely a potential of growth for us. Yeah, uh, and can I add on that? I think there's a very common like workflow with international students is that they go on YouTube and try to find they open up a bunch of YouTube videos about how to apply to a certain scholarship, but that we want to take all that away and have everything on one website. So it doesn't matter if you're from Nepal or from Indonesia, we want this to be able to apply for everyone. Do you like aggregate all that information and put it on your site? Is that kind of what Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you intend to get colleges to accept applications through your platform? Because I know, for example, there is the other platform that I think competes with Common App, which is the Coalition App, and it's also more focused on minorities, but they still can't give like all of the colleges that the Common App has, um, like for them to accept applications through their platform and like you would be coming like long after how would you get to like all the colleges to um, so, yeah, the Common App does have a large list of colleges, but they're mainly focused in the US. So, we can easily expand our business to um, international scholarships and programs that are equally as good as US um, scholarships and programs. Um, so, that's a, a competitive edge that we can have over Common App. And also, uh, uh, colleges are actually uh, decreasing and making the application easier. Like now, right now, many colleges have their SATs and everything optional. So actually, the colleges are looking for the potential student. So uh, yes, we'll, be, we'll be working on our business and try to expand it and having more uh, students from the developing countries. It will be for the, uh, there will be a lot of saturation of the applicants and colleges will be interested to give chance to our, our applicant. And also, the second point is, Having the goodwill for the colleges, since we are focused on developing country, it will help colleges to have better reputation by giving chance to them. Uh, 
Way last Hello, I'm Nam. Phillips. And I'm Emma. And here we are here today to talk about retrons. So a question for all of you. How many of you or how many of you know someone who wants a phone sometime within the next year? <laughs> OK, so I see that we have some tech savvy tech lovers in here. But what if I were to tell you that every year we produce 6.9 million tons of e-waste and only 15% of that is recycled. What does this even look like? In other words, let me translate this for you. This is the equivalent of what would be 19 empire state buildings every year happening right now. Because when we're thinking about the big eco problem, we associate plastic with bottles, but we don't think about our own devices. And even the CEO, Kyle Wines, had said that it is not vital to be able to reuse our old iPhones. It's just simply not, uh, it's not possible. And so we need to look at a better solution. Our environment cannot keep up with our consumer's culture. Meanwhile, in India, I was able to afford a smartphone only in my senior year. And this uh, created a lot of problems for me because I could not contact uh, my friends if I had to work in projects or do my own research. And it's even worse in rural India where, and especially during the pandemic where education was online. So how can we take the electronic devices that are being wasted here and make it useful in India? So we, Retronics have come up with a solution which consists of three steps. So the first is collaborating with electronics companies here so that we can take their old but working devices and ship them to India. In India, we want to collaborate with nonprofit organizations such as Uran. They have like a very solid idea about like where these devices can be best used. And we want to collaborate with them so that we can make sure that they are distributed to the best areas. And thirdly, like the devices won't last forever. So we want to be able to collect them and uh, send it over to a recycling company so that they can be properly disposed of. And now I'll pass it on to Phillips to explain the business model. So money is obviously a significant factor in the business model. And then it is a non financial breakdown of our cost and revenue. So we plan to collect this MO gadgets from tech companies, and it would cost us about $200 to do that. Then we plan to ship them from US to India, which would cost us $50, but that would be one ton of pack a package, and then that is made up of about 5,200 phones, and that's a lot of phones for this price also. When it gets to India, it obviously needs to be redistributed to the local companies, and then we plan to get involved with NGOs to help us do that, and that would cost us $35 also. We made mention of this in those courses because we do not know other costs that we would incur also, and that cost is $50. So our cost sums up there to the total of 335 also. But how do we get money for our program too? So we plan to get e-waste from companies. They pay a huge amount to lion e-waste um, programs that would end up putting their substance in landfills. But when they pay us, we would have a greater resource and a greater end product also. And that will be $50. And when it gets to India, we plan to charge those who need mobile phones just $1. $1 might be very small in America, 
but it has when you look at the real value it makes in India, it will be a lot of significant influence. So if one we return one person one dollar for everyone, we end up making five thousand six hundred US dollars. Now we do not want to end there. What happens when they use these mobile phones? We just don't want them to also dump them in landfill. So you collect them back. You have a system you collect them back, and then you sell them to e-waste um, companies also. And we plan to charge them six point two dollars per device, and that um, accounts to thirty-three thousand two hundred and ninety-two dollars. So that gives us a total of three thousand seven hundred and forty. That's seven thousand five hundred and forty-two dollars, and then we end up with a profit of seven thousand two hundred and seventy. Also, we plan to rely on additional funds, such as we said that would be But I don't think that should end there. We've all listened to how each one has spoken about innovative products and how they are linked to technology. But imagine the number of people who didn't have access to all the ideas we have because they do not have technology. And then if you feel touched by this, you can also be a donor. We don't have to rely on just big organizations. Change starts from us, and then we can all start something small. And so ultimately, e-waste is a huge problem. Why do we need your help right now? E-waste is hazardous. It is toxic. It, contaminate, it contaminates the air, the soil, and the water. So we really need to begin the solution right here and right now. We also have a vision. We want to help reduce poverty. We want to make a sustainable environment. We want to be able to provide quality education. And so, we want to make the change. Do you? Thank you so much. So, I have a question. So, um, uh, do you guys, um, is this just an idea at the moment, or do you actually have the resources to determine how to collect and how to ship? Seems like it's a massive operation. So right now it's just an idea, but we have like um we are thinking about a way to be able to collect stuff um the electronic devices, and we want to do it directly to like the electronic companies as we have already mentioned. And uh such a, like for example, Apple, they they do like great things, and many of the devices uh, that they at uh, they recycle, which means they destroy the phones and just use the parts. But the whole phone as a whole, we can use it and that's what we want to do. Yeah. And also the shipping, but we want to collaborate with like uh, shipping companies because we still need to look into like the best option for us. But there will definitely be charges on that. But uh, yeah, that is how we want to like exclude it from US and then it's it. right. Because ultimately our mission is we want to serve the bridge. This issue is happening because of a lack of awareness and a lack of connection. And that is our mission in this problem. It seems from your model that there's actually more value than the scrap of the phone. And so what I'm wondering is if you're trying to pull those devices away from Apple's or whatever electronic companies, how do you do that? Because even though there's intrinsic value for you all to get this in the hands of people who don't have smartphones, right? Um, it sounds like an Apple might make six bucks a phone or something, right, with the scrap. So how do you divert that? Um, yes. It's almost like you have to bypass. It's like you have to come to me directly as a consumer and say, don't give my phone back. But they give incentives, right? I, if I trade my phone and I get a hundred bucks off a new phone or whatever that is. So how do you bypass all of that? Yeah, so we are uh, we are thinking of uh, using phones that are like really old and no one could want to rebuy them, but they are still working. Like for iPhone 6, it's perfectly functional, but here no one will buy it. And also like uh, for the scrap that I've been reading, so, I mean, recycling, the process of recycling is actually very expensive and like it's better for it to instead go to landfill. And that's what uh, companies mostly do. There's a lot of greenwashing, for example, Apple only uh, I think the statistics we mentioned before, but like only 15% of all the ingredients is recycled. And but instead, if uh, Apple could like collab with us, so we could be it could be like a better reputation for them, like a brand image. And we are also thinking of like uh, promoting this 
our company through social media and like Emma is, uh, Emma already has like 50k followers and she is like an expert in social media advertisement and you want to be able to like talk about if Apple Labs with us so we can talk about like hey Apple is doing this it's working for anyone and so that would be good for Apple as well I think for us. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for everyone. Just waiting on how many for how many was this the first time you've ever pitched? So that's you. We got to be here for your first time. I have no doubt you guys will be pitching a ton more in the future. Um, so what we'll do now is the judges will go to liberate. If you check your email, you have a link to a People's Choice Award. You get to also vote for your peers or for yourselves um, for a team that you think that did a great job. So it's a chance for you to vote as well. And we'll come back and rejoin in a few moments. And um, yeah, that's it. We're just so, um, it's been incredible. We know that you went through um, a lot of, uh, you know, difficult moments, people are up late, but it came through and all of your hard work really showed through. So we'll be proud of And you. let's thank Nathan for all of the Grab your sandwich and boba before the students hit the, uh, the sandwich bar. And then, so follow Neetal and she'll get you set up in the conference room. Students, hang tight because I have a couple things to go over with you. Don't worry, there's food. I know the calf closed. Okay. Uh, and if you have to eat for something academic, fine. Grab You can grab your sandwich and boba on your way out. But most of you are going to stay here because I have news for you. Oh, so I have news. Good news for you. Okay, Marion, are we coming back? We're not coming back here. Give me a word. Okay. I don't need to stand behind here. Um, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me get your attention. First of all, oh my God, you gate. Can we just applaud? Now, I want to um, ask Marina, is it possible for someone from it for them just to talk into the camera and just say what this was like for them? Just a couple. We'll probably do one of those reels. It'll not be right away, but it would be very meaningful if you went. Carol, I'd love to have captured your face when you were freaking out earlier because you did so well. Everyone did so well. And Amelia wasn't even going to come today. They had decided at 3.13 in the morning to like, now nah, we're not going to do it. And they revised that decision and showed up. And I just start with you and say, how did that feel? I thought it wasn't going to happen. I didn't think I would be here right now. <laughs> and how are you feeling? Are you glad you did it? Are you glad? <laughs> But here, where are you? And you too, you weren't going to do it. So, wow, that's great. That happens sometimes. Sometimes, you know, it's funny because I had posted but, um, Like I posted that thing that Billy Fisher said yesterday that six, the opposite of success is not failure. The opposite of success is quitting. Right, yes. Actually, I thought about that. You did? You actually yeah. thought about what you said? Yeah, kind of, and like that's the thing. Good, that's great. Because, you know, in the world of entrepreneurship, it's also the world of growth mindset that failure is not failure, it's just information. It's an opportunity to revise. If any of you listen to podcasts, I know you're choosing my podcast consultant. Um, there's one called How I Built This about people who have built up companies and you listen to their stories and their harrowing experiences. And even Billy Fisher, I know a lot of you were not listening to him yesterday because I was sitting in the back and you were working on your project. <laughs> and so I, I was going to go shut your computers, but he was talking about the huge failure that happened to him in his warehouse when they got their first delivery of shoes. 
and the big disaster that happened to them this year. You know, when you see people's marketing, you're seeing the clean and fresh and bright marketing side of a business, but that's not what it's like. So it's just keep that in mind in life. This is such a good experience. Carol, can you say something about how you felt freaked out earlier and what it felt like now to be on the other end done? I just felt so nervous and anxious. And I really thought we weren't going to be able to explain everything in a short time. So like, oh my God, we have so much to say. So we can like some rest. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Yeah, her face was great too, but it was kind of funny. I mean, again, the stakes are pretty low here, even though it doesn't feel like it. So yes, it, I mean, I say the stakes are low because I'm older and I have been through so many things and I realized that even when I have been a colossal failure, I have had some humdinger failures right here at SOCA. I mean, I had a critical conversations at SOCA that was, there was a moment of disaster that was so harrowing that I thought my skin was gonna melt off. And I had to hold a sign up to the people on the stage saying stop because it was not good. It was just one of those professional moments. And I had some, people reach out to me the next day because as a producer of the event, as the person responsible, everyone, you know, you, you have to own what happened. And all I could say when these people reach out to me is like, yeah, what a disaster that was for me and for the school. Oops, you know, because that happens, let's just take it from here and move on. Wait, what did they say? Huh? What's that? What did they say when they say disastrous? Uh, Oh, we just had an interview on stage with someone with a very famous person, and the interviewer was acting erratic. It wasn't someone from SOCA. It was someone who brought them off, and it was weird. It was odd, beyond odd. I don't even know what to say, but I'm the one who brings in the facilitators and speakers. So I people were looking over at me like, what's going on? Is this a joke? Is this okay? And who knows what was happening with this individual. And I don't want to say the person's name because they're a solid professional. I wouldn't have brought them onto our stage. Um, it was a situation. I don't know what was going on with her. And I uh, gave her her privacy around that because she didn't say anything to me. No. But the guest that we had on stage just looked at me and I looked at him. All I said to him was, holy guacamole. And he said, oh, say no more. I did my best. So this stuff happens, but that, that's all to say that I just want you to know it's never going to change. You're going to be working in five years, in five minutes, you could be on a project that turns out well, but it's all how you decide to move forward from it and how you decide to frame it. And you can have that moment of sheer suffering, like that was so embarrassing. I, that wasn't what I wanted that, that I, I, this whole thing is so awkward, but you all stood up here in front of judges. And I'm so, I'm just so impressed that you spent your weekend doing that. First of all, so many of you are international students. You're already like a thousand percent ahead of where a lot of us are because you're willing, you've left your countries and come to an, a country where many times you're speaking another language and you were talking about a political system that you have not been immersed in. It was just, I'm, I just think it shows a level of strength and grit and resilience. And plus you spent your weekends here. So I ordered sandwiches and boba to celebrate you. And I don't know if it got enough, but I do want to let you know that nobody should be hungry, okay? That we'll order pizza. If some of you are still hungry, we'll just have Tony Pepperoni drop some pizzas off this afternoon, okay? Because <laughs> also your comrade here was like, hey, calf is closed. The timing of the calf thing is weird on the weekends for us. So a couple things, if you can say, uh, just have some fun, say something into the camera about what the experience was like for you. What's a question we could frame? Uh, what's something that terrified you and what's something you learned? If you would, that would be cool. If you don't want to and you feel like, thank you very much, I've done enough, that's fine too. I do want to let you know that I'm working with Professor Lisa McLeod on another opportunity called the Fowler Global Social Innovation Challenge. And there are some professors during learning cluster who are going to start this process, but you don't have to do it in your learning cluster. They're just going to weave it into the curriculum. Uh, this is a global business plan, social innovation business plan competition. 
that the pigeons are in June. SOCA will send a team. It's different than the UCI opportunity where we don't have, we don't have to have students from other campuses. So you all, if you're interested in it, keep in mind that that's an opportunity in the spring semester. Uh, I get to interview a lot of you B2B new apps in the next couple of weeks. I'm excited about that. And we're also going to be having a B2B leadership circle for the spring semester for students who are really ready for some personalized attention about next steps. Okay. Who has any questions about anything? Yes. Ultimately, we will only send one team, but we'll, we'll probably do. We've never done this before. It's a much deeper dive into social entrepreneurship. It's part of our partnership with the University of San Diego, Croc Center for Peace, their social innovation. We have a program where you can do a four plus one at SOCA, four years here, one year there, and you get a discount on tuition and you also graduate with, in, with a master's. Um, I'm not bringing up exactly what it's in peace and conflict resolution and social innovation. So that's a, an educational program we have for grad school, but this, this competition is just an extra that we're doing. But what's exciting for me is going to be is partnered with the academic affairs side. And then whatever team gets picked, we'll be sending to, I don't know where it is this year. I wish it was the Bahamas or someplace glamorous. I think it's Minneapolis. Um, do you know where it is? Where? I'm not sure if it is, but it's someplace. It's not like Minnesota. It's somewhere in Minnesota. Beautiful, by the way. There's lakes and everything. But um, anyway, just saying that just that's out there. And now I think I've talked long enough. Jet, are you setting up an interview spot for students? Okay, this is so casual. You want to go get your bobas and your sandwiches? And then will you, some of you, please get interviewed about what terrified you and what you learned and what you feel successful about? Because in my old age, uh, I'll look at these videos like your sweet grandmother, who I really enjoyed seeing a picture of her because you spoke about her so lovingly before. Um, I'm going to be looking at your beautiful face. I just, I, you, you all inspire me every day. So thank you. And then uh, what I'll do is I think we're probably going to be giving the awards out uh, and whenever the judges are done. It'll be before two. So you kind of hang around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 
Thank you. You rocked it. You have a program sandwich. I just any more presentations? No, we would like to, oh, is this? I would like to have something pretty up there. Does she have the impact on? Uh, does she have one that said "Welcome to Impact Time"? It's not my. I don't. It's not my computer. I don't know. Um, let's see if yeah yeah let's go to the wait back up one active on she has the zoom active on this is the dashboard let me fool around up here if i whatever i do here is going to show up there oh uh, do we can okay right now. this might be the one no. That's not it. Uh, well, she has a really pretty one. So share with me my drive priority. Let's see what my drive says. Thank you, Mary, for all of Thank you very much, Mary. Good. How do you usually address by students? Like I forgot to ask that the first time. So like, you know, people used to call. I like I'm casual, so I like first name. I used to go by Mary Patrick, but Mary Patrick. Grandma. <laughs> I like just Mary. Mary. I think Grandma Mary Patrick is too much. <laughs> I like, and I had a Grandma Mary, so I've been shortening my name and just having people call me Mary. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Mary. Simple to get out. What's that? It's on the it's on Instagram of your dress. So like, very adorable. She's yeah, so that's right. Yeah, I'm ridiculous. I miss her. Uh, okay, judges folder participant. This participant okay. folder. This is good. Oh, it's a new background. We're getting somewhere. This might be pretty. Can you send me the link? But no, it's not big though. Oh, okay. okay, great. How about that? I have to it. Oh, it's virtual. Well, maybe I have access from the yeah. drive. Well, so that would be pretty. Yeah. So good. But, all right. I think our persona setting can be more like the true. Maybe we can. Just and where is my clicker? Sorry, it's on the screen. Yeah, maybe it's, it's much stronger than that. Oh, really? They didn't put it back down? I don't think the portion was going So that's the one that Did anyone walk away with my clicker? Oh, I don't think so. The award. I've used oh, it. Maybe Emma? Oh, were they? I don't think it works for anybody. The show about that. It works. I I clicked the words of the new. Yeah, I did click. So I did click the slide from the PC. I noticed you on the click. So I'm just gonna walk up and down here and see who swiped my clicker. How did it feel? You guys did great. Did you feel good about it? Uh, we were talking about we could we could have done better for the presentation well, wise. Some reflection here. Yeah, we if we even made a calendar or something, but we didn't include it and next like we could have shown like how to do it. Like we had a calendar, we implemented some stuff. So we could have shown that. Well, also the, the thing is as some people move it forward into another competition. Every time you do it, right? You're gonna have ways to make it better. Yeah. Yeah. So, maybe so, I mean, we are going to have this Fowler Global Social Innovation Contest if the grad school wants to participate in that. Also, I would think um, talking more to Jesse might be interesting to you because he's an educator. Oh, okay. right. I think that was good. Really, we started from the gap and need. We started from the need, like what is needed from the society. We started covering our conversation from what is needed. 
And that I think that because the business is all about solving the problem, providing value to those who actually in need. We don't buy something we don't need. Yeah. So this is very really good research from Jeff. What about your reflection? Mm, I just think that we have really good teamwork and I really appreciate the attitudes. Sometimes I feel like kind of rush, but you really patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the presentation, I just have some like I'm not I'm not familiar with this presentation, like so I think I can look more or you know have more kind of interaction with the yeah, with the judges. Mm -hmm. I think you did really great that like you have used body language yeah, and you know being the host of the stage. Hello, hello, hello. Great job, great job. Yeah, because you know, you both of you look really confident. Yeah, I know. Was it like clear the idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, understandable. It's a bit more stark too. Okay. Mine says 130. Those bastards, they put me in for 115. Maybe you're helping with setup. I am. Okay. Yeah, I thought I was going to go to work at 1.15. What's that? I thought I was going to go to work at 1.15 as well, but uh, I just go out on 30. So I'll see you when everyone's trying to get behind the camera. What's that? Yeah, you should have to get behind the camera. Right. Test storm two. Uh, are they going to be using the microphone by announcement or all of this like related to the Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's just where it came. I had to back my side. Just in case it'll be. Yeah, it's on. Which is kind of for our for my final paper. So I really have to deal with what you know, my final paper. Wow. Thank you for speaking the time. No, no, no. Thank you. It's really nice, like you know, finishing up my you know, I have time this afternoon, just a little bit, so I can build the project. Competition one be in this programming. Yeah, they yeah. work really hard this evening. I think. Yeah, you also going to work, right? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like college lab always have work to do. Can you share because that your ideas for the previous few days is a big deal? There's a lot of like individuals for the idea of competition at your hand. So it's like, uh, you know, okay. I have to decide that it's several. And you still have that ideas in the field of education? No. Oh, oh. oh. It was about like providing free Wi Fi in like specific like area mm -hmm. or. It was something that oh, yeah, there is like educational system, but it was like online educational platform, which is funded by funded by government and private company. 
and that was actually implemented. Like I didn't become became the part of it, but like I pitched the idea, and those person actually in charge of like running the company, they're actually implementing. So mm -hmm. one company was established. The Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi too. Not the Wi-Fi, the education one mm -hmm. was actually implemented. What was your idea about that education? It was about like how youth can be have get access to not only on the academic contents of like academic like courses, but also how they can access to get uh, nurturing the soft skills through uh, online networking, uh, online platform. And they are not we are not focusing those students who actually need. We are focusing on students who actually have the great excellence in academic and also social change. So we're going to create, a, uh, they're going to, they're pretty providing a platform uh, of uh, creating a spaces where like youth change maker can actually post about their life and also get sponsored by the companies and get the horizontal kind of crowd board crowd is now implemented. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Wow, and it, it, it's implemented into the like kindly, my one of my friends became CEO my of our idea. So like he's kindly now. I think. Yeah, that was really nice experiences. So it can be happen. I really want to do something that it can be realized. Not just ideas. And it can be realized in the future. Actually, this is the presentation that I made to get actually get so this is very single idea yeah yeah oh. but we created like a customer journey of what kind of ability students can get through our services and we created a role of the services you created in your university no no it's like outsider like private Oh, education okay. not like social enterprise oh, oh, it's not like non-profit they are making profit mm -hmm. but they already got this they already got the interest awesome. yeah. so, yeah 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 because that's actually happening in your like, yeah, like did we do the interview technique? No. No? Yeah, we, we, we should. You should do it. Are we supposed to? No, you don't have to. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's just if it's like have your you, heart's have desire. Have you finished the Ryan's assignment and like Callan's assignment? When is Ryan's assignment due? Next week. Next week. And Karen's is due at the end of the week? Next week. Yeah. Next week. Class time. You have to bring the presentation. Because Tuesday we're going on a field trip. True. But we yeah, that's what the next week. Oh no, presentation wow. was the previous very assignment. Amplified. Yeah. Um, exciting. No, I actually I was supposed to meet. I was going to meet with Rob to go over my draft, but I don't feel like it. I'm not going to do it because I'm I'm tired and I want to do nothing. Yeah. Was, but uh, no, I will. Work. Why? Why is like my own? <laughs> That
Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I have to finish my research project. Yeah. Until graduation. A year. One year and a half. Your bachelor's Your and then the next sentence I have, I need to finish my pro proposal. Okay. Have you guys voted on the people's choice? Sorry? You guys voted on the people's choice? <laughs> we did. Oh, How do we vote? It's a Google form. Yes. And it's a this one no, you get it. This one you can okay. oh, I don't know. What kind of oh, thank you. It would take a lot to finish your we had, I think it's always better if you have a lot of those given and not as much. And then that is a genius. The funniest thing that she said was, I've been arguing to myself and I put all of my arguments in like the questions. I've been thinking of all of my questions. And she's in the So basically, I'll use that. Now it's just a risk, right? Leadership. Which they well, why is so they yeah, themselves yeah. identify their wisdom. But also, they to uh, uh, discover so the each other and create an interconnected net and also initiate a so so after the interconnection, uh, after the realization of the interconnectedness. So, oh, no. as an educator, as a minister, like, no. so I how can I take the educational experiences that those students in the educational institution can? experiences this educational path, but also how can we measure those both? Also, what is a crucial element? Is that the curriculum? Is that the teacher? Is that the peers? Is that educational institution? Like these, like there's different uh, value of the speech of nature. So but that's when our papers do. But we have to start the cloud mark. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, good job, guys. And also human relationship. Yeah. Now, how we make sure the students get the healthy human relationship, especially those students who have destructive habits of human relationship, like politicizing, or you know, there's a lot of behavioral habits, like in the thinking way, verbally, and also behaviorally, there's different individual has habits of interacting with people. So how can we self, how can we provide students like certain flexible opportunities? Also, how can we inform students there is a better option and also better choice you can take at each given moment? And how students can get the flexible 
uh, have the ability to keep reflecting their behavior and convenience to be between a political main healthy relationship. Yeah. I am going to do more. I wish I could do more empirical tools I don't study for. Yes, not on this theoretical research. I would like to collect the data and actually analyze it to really showing that the theoretical research can be implemented in the real world. And what are the benefits of implementing this theory into in this context? And what are the disadvantages and challenges of applying this theory to this given context? I want to analyze it from a kind of a good possible, possible solution or what are the possible research topic to further develop and of implementing leadership development in global citizenship education. Yeah, so this kind of a big like I think. Yeah, oh, we can go research. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also, we can get. Uh, Looking different very cool. But there is one institution unlike this UA there like a lot of countries have shown to the universe to the educational institution great. And also Actually, as in, in the one or two that presented, the presentative students to go to education. It's like a like small model event of like a, in a high school. And there is very really interesting in the high school in your group. So I may only look into the model or maybe the school education college. So I feel so I should be, you know, I'm inside of this research and I'm just a but it's like an insider like um, research. So it's it's really important inside actually contribute to the to the research, but I'm not sure I can actually publish if I'm talking about so education. So I'm going to yeah, take a balance between looking into body creating education, but at the same time, creating something like tangibly, physically present at the channel and also conferences. We think it will understand the lack of objectivity. Yeah. So we can definitely like some object but I was I'm writing up a body trace because I can very different situations. So that I can see this not unique to the body but also if I observe how it needs to education I want to start to compare with other education environment. So my education environment to really compare what in what way we are in what way we are in what way we can collaborate, in what way we can keep our existence. Like these are interesting topic. I'm excited. Yeah, same. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. 
Judges, they are, they are going to, you guys want to join over here. They're going to, I'm going to give the floor to them and then we also will announce the People's Choice Award. I feel like we should have a group. Let's give them a group. Sounds like you are going first. Well, let me just tell you, we just call. We're so proud of you, base base level. Like, just this is not easy to pull this off in twenty four hours and to come up with an idea and then build these decks and a bunch of grown ups sitting in front of you and asking you hard questions. So we're just I I know on behalf of all of us, we're so so proud of you all and trust that you all are going to go on to do amazing things, um, big impacts in this world. So we'll just level that with that. Yeah. We have four awards, one for each judge. Um, Get sort of three categories and then best overall. So with that, Tom's going to take it away. Great. Uh, and ditto. Uh, what you said, it's it's not easy to uh, uh, public speaking skills and just come up and present to everybody. And, um, and given the amount of time that you guys had, uh, these presentations were extremely thorough. Uh, so you guys did a fantastic job. And I would say that um, you guys all um, are are wonderful. It was very difficult to sort of pull. In any of these out but like if you didn't win it doesn't mean that your idea is bad or your idea isn't feasible at all and i'd encourage you guys to run with it when as best you possibly can so um we created a category that was um for lack of a better word uh the fastest to market we felt like it was ready the idea was really strong um 
and really could like be presented to other people right away. And um, uh, and, I, and I would say, as I was um, going through this, um, I felt like uh, it was really uh, easy to understand. I think that the stats that we had were um, very alarming to me as, as a US citizen, knowing that only 50% of the people actually um, vote. And so uh, we elected this um, for best marketability is Polybody. Do they come on, so come on up and we can shake your hand and. We can hear. Oh, official pictures. Oh, what is the prize? What do they get? Oh. They get four hundred dollars. They get four hundred dollars. Yeah. What? Okay, yes. <laughs> And then why don't you stand by the judges for one formal picture there with our photo of in front of us? Yeah, why don't you guys come in front of us? Because you're more important. All right, congratulations. I want to say thank you all so much for being here, being present, and believing in your ideas. Now, it's hard to convince people to believe in what you believe in sometimes. We wanted to make sure to acknowledge those that did a great job of doing it. The story was great, started off powerful, and you also brought together the ideas in a way that was very clear to understand the need. So we wanted to present the best presentation, best storytelling to the group Hey Five. And someone needs to tell them what you want. You're getting four hundred dollars. Thank you very much. Pictures. All right, come on. Unfortunately, our order to the intro academy. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's like the guy to the right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, this is our, our third category before we get to best overall. And this is for um, the pitch that had the most impact. Um, clearly identified a large social impact issue and then really walked through the steps about how they were going to solve that. And we felt like as heavy of a lift as it was, it was really clear that they had identified the, the social uh, impact issue and, and, and a solution for it. The winner will get also get $400. Um, and for that, we are giving it to Retronics. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats, nice work. Congrats. Good job. Nice work on it. Yeah, nice work. Good job. All right. Okay, good morning. Thank you. So much. All right, so again, not repeat what my colleague said, but um, wonderful job, everybody. So the best overall pitch today will get $800. Uh, we felt like the presentation was outstanding. Um, it hit a lot of our area of impact. Uh, really um, strong model. I think we're thinking still to refine a little bit maybe the, the business model itself, but we thought it was very promising. Um, also a clear, you know, value proposition and problem solution stated um, with a big impact. So um, we would like to recognize the best uh, pitch today to help his life. Uh, 
We have one more award and we have our, our remote team that's going to announce it. So we're going to get on. <laughs> All right, yes, um, our remote team has been supporting us in the background. Uh, Hi, everyone. Um, I wish we could see you. And uh, I wish we were we were there in person to to take photos with you as we're announcing this award. Um, so this is congratulations uh, to all, all the team. Uh, you did such a wonderful job. Um, congratulations for all your hard work and the enthusiasm. We are uh, so inspired uh, to uh, to have listened to your pitches today. With that being said, uh, you are the ones uh, who chose uh, this the winner. So with that being said, without further ado, the winner of the People's Choice Award today is, drum rolls, <laughs> hey Fi. congratulations. Hey Fi. You know what? They should be in front with everyone. So these are the people. I mean, why don't you all do a yeah. uh, And then we'll take a photo. I'll look at the judges. We want all the people to take a photo. Yeah, pop up, pop up. Then we'll go out. Um, and I also want to remind you all why you're all this is hurting cats. I know it's been a long weekend. Everyone up. Let's oh, take it in front of the screen. Even the judges. The people united are so complicated, but not today. So, uh, I also want to I want to remind you all that um, we need to get in. See how close we want to get to each other. How can we get us all? We had this on frame. That's Randy. <laughs> Closer, closer, closer. Yeah. Closer, closer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.